Okay. Greetings. 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 This is uh, March 1st, 2021. This is the Q&A for the upcoming course, the nine or healing the nine centered being. And our goal today is to just give you a brief overview of what the course is about and answer any questions you may have. Yes, yes, that was, yes. <laughs> See very, how succinct that was? Yeah, Are you clear, proud of me? Very clear and succinct. <laughs> so um, unlike me. Yes, but um, before we get going. I want to just send a lot of just good energy out there for uh, just for people out there who may need it. I love to start everything that I do off from my heart space. So I just want to say that I love you. I forgive you. I accept you. I allow you and I honor you. And that is for each and every person that lays eyes on this video, that's connected in any type of way, shape or form. I just wanna send a big giant, you know, serious I forgive you to a lot of people out there because a lot of us, we are holding on to things that just don't belong to us. And that could really muddy up your window when it comes to trying to you know create a life for yourself or you know or when you're trying to unlock abundance and you're trying to do all of this magical stuff but then it seems as if it's like only like a trickle of the magic is kind of flowing in so i just want to just say for everyone uh just the, the biggest download that i've been getting this year so far is just gratitude and being in gratitude is so high of a vibration you can't even it's it's hard to even talk about but one of the main things that unlocked my abundance was just really really being in gratitude all the time and, and literally forcing myself to be in it so this is all about this course is all about healing the nine centers but it's healing the nine centers so that we can make way for the gratitude and the abundance and the prosperity to flow down with ease and grace so i just want to let you guys know that like you know that the purpose of this is really to continue to expand i see it oh okay i was trying to, is do to uh without <laughs> stopping you uh yeah I, she, we try to let somebody in yeah i thought i'm sorry guys i thought i had disabled the waiting room feature because I didn't want to have to go, but Zoom has all these new protocols now because of, you know what, the thing that shall oh. not be named. So I guess they have more security <laughs> breaches because everyone's using it now. Oh. But I was trying to not interrupt your flow, and yet I still did. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> okay. The Welcome manifestor Kelly. has impact. <laughs> yes. But yeah, it's all good. It's just, it's just really just, um, you know, just getting everybody set, up, uh, just settled in, and just. Um, letting you know that the course is about healing our nine centers but it's also i want you guys to look at look at yourselves like a cup and a lot of what's kind of blocking our abundance or blocking this so-called new earth energy from really opening up for a lot of us it's just simply we have too much stuff we have too much debris or or uh just muddy energy within our cup and our cup is, we would say the nine centers. Mm. So this course is about the alchemy of releasing all of this debris and all of this, all of these doubts in these certain uh, programs and belief systems so that you can make way for that abundance to flow in like you know that it should because it totally is happening for a lot of people. But a lot of those people, they don't have the same belief systems or the same muddy energy within their system um, from other people. You know, uh, a lot of them, they keep the, a lot of those people to keep themselves super contained. So it's a, it's a reason for that. And a lot of you all are the opposite of being contained. We're in the energy of opening up and moving towards wholeness and connecting with each other. So 
the shadow side to that is this not being so contained and having these belief systems that may pour in from other people that will kind of muddy in that will muddy in you know kind of fog up your cup so the more fog the more mud the more uh things like that or uh just just trying to figure out the word being you know this contrary energy um mm. it shows up as contrary yeah it, it, it shows up as contrary and conflicting energy and that same contrary and conflicting energy is what's slowing down our manifestation process and blocking our abundance so that's just what i'm what that's just what i wanted to say and share yeah and so there's some graduates from our new earth self-leadership academy there's also someone who's currently in the apprenticeship program so those of you who've been through the program you know you know what an in-depth course that is so i just want to take a moment to explain um why we're offering this course this year instead of the traditional nestle course so um because of the global situation right now, we know that a lot of people are having um, uncertainty with their finances. Now, as coaches, we will still give you the tools to come out with abundance regardless of collective circumstances. Um, because at the end of the day, the divine abundance is not taking a rest because there's chaos down here. The abundance is still there, um, but we also, understand that in the current state of affairs, it can be very difficult to commit to a course that's going to cost thousands of dollars. And even when we charge $5,000 for the year of the course, it's still hugely underpriced. Um, so for us, it's, it's about offering you a version of the newer self leadership Academy that's more condensed, that's more affordable, um, and the trade-off is there's more independent study involved. So we will give you homework, we will give you exercises, um, but it's not as hands-on as the newer Self-Leadership Academy. So that's that's how we found the balance. So we can offer really a lot of the same subject matter to you um, without you having to make such a, not only a big financial commitment, but also the time commitment. Because um, for all of you who've graduated from the program, it's a, it's a huge commitment of time because we're not, here to just give you a bunch of facts and just give you a bunch of information. As I've said before, if information was all it took for enlightenment and health, the whole world would be enlightened now because everything's on the internet. Mm -hmm. So this course is about, of course, giving you the information, but then helping you to actually apply it. And that's really what we're offering. And, you know, we're both, if you know anything about human design, we both have a lot of third lines in our chart. That's very much about practical experience, actually the doing of it. So um, with this approach, we're just going to go center by center, starting with the crown and then working our way down. And then in a minute, I'm going to ask you to explain the water path version for that. Um, so that we'll go through each center systematically. We will be covering the differences in how the center operates when it's defined, undefined or open. So a defined center obviously is one that's colored in in your chart. That means one of the gates in that center connects to an opposing gate from another center, and that makes a full line. That's how a center gets defined. So you have that line there consistently, no matter what, no matter what the transits are, no matter what time of year it is. Um, an undefined gate has hanging gates that are activated, but they don't connect to an opposing gate of another center and an open center has no gates defined whatsoever. So as we go through each of the nine centers, we're going to talk about how the center differs depending on which of those three options you have on your chart. And this is also gonna help you understand the people around you that you deal with. Because for example, the difference between a defined solar plexus and an undefined solar plexus is huge. Huge. And it's good to not only know your chart, but your spouse's chart, your children's chart, your boss, people that you're interacting with, so that you can not only, you know, just have an easier, more graceful time navigating through life, but also so that we can release a lot of the judgment we have towards ourselves and others, because we are really still holding this idea that we're all the same. 
because there's this beautiful political concept that all men are created equal. And it's a nice idea on paper. And it's true in the divine sense that we're all, we all equally belong here. We all equally have the right to get on this planet and go through our process and learn what we want to learn and experience our experiences. But equal in terms of interchangeable, equal in terms of being the same, it's just not true. Mm -hmm. So human design is the science of differentiation. This is about learning who you are as an individual and how that differs from other people around you. Um, so what I love about human design is that information makes forgiveness so much easier. A lot of us struggle with forgiveness, but you know, for example, seeing my parents' charts, learning that they're both five ones, my brother's a one three, I'm a six three. For a five one who's not experimental like the three, it was very difficult for them to raise us. Very confusing. We had a lot of conflict because of this just different orientations. So to have this information and to be able to just release all the charge around that, it's not only is it helpful, it's good for your health, you know, to not carry as Kayvon was saying, all this extra grime in our cup. Um, so we'll be going through center by center. We're also gonna do a brief overview of each gate in every center. So you will have a really good overview of what that center is about, what challenges it brings or what you know strengths. And then you'll have two weeks to kind of take that in and just observe yourself in your life. You know, So for example, as we start with the crown, how 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 are things different for me with a totally open crown say i just went to the grocery store right i pick up on everybody's stuff so you know how does that affect my practical life mm -hmm. you know in my case i have to have a grocery list or i'll just be off in all directions <laughs> totally unfocused it takes me two hours to shop for six things and i end up with 40 things i didn't need right so we'll go through the centers. You'll have the two weeks to figure out how it applies to you. And then we'll meet again as a group to do a shamanic healing ceremony to clean out what you've discovered is there that just doesn't serve you anymore. Do you want to speak about why we're doing the water path version? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, and just well said. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> um, so um, what she was talking about, like, you know, like she say, we're going to start off with the crown. So the water path and depending on who's on this call, some of you I've been speaking to about this, uh, depending on when we had our last session or not. Um, but the water path is something that I've been working on and I've been just dealing with for like almost two years now. Mm -hmm. I think it's been almost two years. So. Simply put, when we're talking about evolution and we're talking about uh, spiritual alchemy, meaning transforming yourself from one state to the next, to the next highest state or next highest frequency. So when it comes to waking up as a society, what we normally start off with all the time is fire. So a lot of people know the fire as the Kundalini. And the Kundalini is super important and is um, something that definitely needs to be activated eventually. But the way that we go about it is the most important. So recently, literally, like I'm talking about within the last maybe two years, humanity has been getting hit with a major Kundalini spike. So a lot of people who's been going through rapid evolutionary changes and total wake ups and they don't know what the heck is going on. And then, um, you know, and some of us, we've been waking up to this energy a long time ago, like well before this. So the fire path energy has been taught by a lot of the masters out there and that's what the majority of them teach. But the only issue with the fire energy is that when it comes to the body, so remember, we're in the body and we came here to perfect the experience of the soul within the body. So we have to honor the body. And what this whole human design process also is about honor and respect. Mm -hmm. Respecting ourselves, honoring ourselves. And once you do that, you automatically start respecting and honoring everyone else around you. Mm -hmm. So that's something to always remember about this. Just the, this, this is really about honor and respect. 
So this Kundalini energy, the only so the 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 only bad part about it is when you just go straight into the Kundalini, it's almost like white sugar. You know, it's very hard to get out of your your organs. It's it's very it's it tastes real good, but it's super damaging to the body. Mm-hmm. So when the Kundalini fire is activated before the proper your system is set up properly, what happens is is when it gets to the water aspect, when it gets to your kidneys, because the Kundalini is energy that starts at the bottom and it literally rises up and it goes up the chakra column. So it goes from the bottom up. Most of the time when people are talking about these spiritual practices and everything, they always start off at the root and we make our way up to the crown. But what happens is, is it leaves you ungrounded at the end of the day. So it leaves you with all of the energy in your head. The problem with that is we're on earth. We're still alive. So we need to actually bring that energy and divine healing frequency down to the earth, not up because we're not escaping anything anymore we understand who we are and now we're walking as these god type beings in training Mm -hmm. so the water path starts at the top and it literally is like divine fluid that flows down so the kundalini when it gets but just going back to the kundalini when the kundalini gets to the to the kidneys the kidneys is made up of the water element it starts to burn up the kidneys and now you start to need a whole lot of water. And you can just notice lately within the last maybe 10 years, five to 10 years, like the water, people have been needing a whole lot of water, a lot of us, because we have been all on the fire path. So the kidneys start to get heated up with too much fire and then it can start damaging the kidneys. And then it moves from the kidneys and it goes up to it starts to do major damage when it gets to the liver because the liver is made up out of the wood element Mm -hmm. and most of us haven't even learned about the wood element or the metal element or these extra elements Mm -hmm. so the liver makes up the the wood element so when the fire gets there it starts to burn up the wood Mm -hmm. which is no good and once it gets to a certain level the, the liver will have a very hard time regenerating and then you just start deteriorating so and then it keeps going up and then you know you up and out and you out of here like body is emaciated uh you know super gaunt looking all of this craziness because the fire within is totally burning up everything our body is made up of them of what like say like 80 percent water it keeps changing every year but it's super hot (laughs) (laughs) too much fire will burn up that water in your body and this is what's causing all of the gaunt energy as we get older we're supposed to we're supposed to be we're supposed to be full of juice and life as we grow older not like just becoming dried up you know so the water path instead of you know burning you up it literally it activates the divine fluid that flows from the top down and it starts to coat all of the organs and once all of the organs are coated with this divine water fluid it gets down to the bottom of the root and then it hits the kundalini then it sparks the kundalini up properly while the body is coated with this divine fluid so now the kundalini rises up without damaging the kidneys the intestines the liver and all of that it rises up and now your body feels more like a jacuzzi Mm -hmm as opposed to a desert and you're like totally sweating and like totally needing all this water all the time. When you, when your body needs one thing all the time, then that means something is wrong. Our bodies are supposed to naturally be, we're not supposed to be super needy all the time for nutrients or, or anything. So once you start practicing this proper energy and you start moving the energy down and you start realizing that there is no escaping consciousness. So we go bottom up to escape. We go top down to create and to live and to be. And the water path is the immortal path. It immortalizes you and it provides you with this youthful energy. 
it also heals you and it activates your healing energy times a thousand. But it also turns on the magnetic energy within you. And for those of us who are not magnetic, like projectors and reflectors and manifestors, you can literally kind of like, it's almost like a cheat code. When you start to turn on your water energy, you start to get a lot colder and that's the sign that the magnetism is on. And now you're like a pseudo generator and you can start to magnetize things to you a lot easier just by tapping into this water energy. So our program is literally starting us off with this water energy so that by the time that we end it after after nine months, all of this divine energy and healing will be grounded down into the reality. So that you can start walking in your expanded state as opposed to trying to hurry up and leave. And this is how we ground down new earth into the reality by bringing it from the top down from our imaginations down. So yeah. Yeah, nice. The water path. <laughs> yeah, so we'll be integrating that with our approach. Um as she drinks water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there'll be two webinars per center, just in case that wasn't already clear. Um and then we move to the next center. So it'll be a nine month program. Um we do have sign up buttons available now on the home page of the website www.activationcoaching.com. Nestla alumni, if you want to join, um contact me because you get a big discount. So um definitely contact me. Don't sign up the normal way. Um So yeah, what else do I need to Early say about birds. the list? Um, I didn't do an early bird discount because the prices are so low already. Okay, okay. So just, just asking. We just are asking. we are gonna have a secret Facebook group. Um, I've been really on the fence about being on Facebook at all, but I just couldn't decide on an alternative that I really liked and felt good about yet. So we're we're committing on Facebook for another round. <laughs> um, but that also just makes it convenient for the vast majority of people. So um, hello. Uh, it's not a good for I don't like telegram as a forum for group chats because when you post something 20 things can get posted underneath and then you have to go and check your notes it's not the, and, the and, thing and they ain't ready yet. They there's ain't ready a reason yet. why there's what 3 billion 2.5 billion people on Facebook it's really well designed yeah uh, you yeah. know just I gotta give it to Mark Zuckerberg he's a 63 like me for better for worse <laughs> there's a lot of crazy 63s in the public sphere right now um so we will use facebook so we will have the secret group um but unlike the newer self-leadership academy this does not include private sessions or office hours so we are offering you 10 percent off private sessions while you're in the course um and then of course nestle alumni you continue to get the 90 dollars rate for all your sessions regardless um, there is a bonus though. If you choose to pay for the course in full, you will get two free sessions, one with Kayvon and one with me. So that's kind of an incentive for people to pay in full. Um, but otherwise there's the monthly rate and, uh, it's, it'll be pretty straightforward. We will be meeting on zoom, um, and everything will be recorded. So you will have lifetime access to the recordings as well. So, as always, we prefer for you to be there live because then we can answer your questions. Mm -hmm. I'm a responder, so it's easier for me to be effective if I'm responding to what you want to know about as opposed to just speaking to avoid. Um, but there will be recordings because we understand nobody can make every single one every time. But there will be prizes for those who do come to every webinar live. There's going to be a great prize at the end. Yeah. and. Um... Just uh, you were saying about uh, office hours or the secret Facebook group or dang it. It was just in my head pricing. No, um, 
Well, while you're doing that, should I open it up for questions? Yeah, they can open okay. up. Golly, it's just totally lost my mind. It's totally okay. Crap. All right, whatever. Hi, Diana just joined. Hi, Diana. Hello. So, yeah, welcome to everyone. Hi, Tanisha, everybody who is joining while we were chatting. Um, good to see you, honey. So we'd like to open up the floor and anybody have any questions or comments or any Nestle alumni who maybe want to give a testimonial? Oh, oh, oh. What? oh yeah. Time out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Memory came back. Memory came back. Oh, no, it's just was talking. I just was talking about um, just, um, you know, if you decide to join the program and showing up live. Mm -hmm. So much is so much magic in the live when we do the live, uh, when we do the live webinars. Also, you can ask questions, you know, that can pretty much dive us even deeper. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when I do my live stuff, like I talk about things and we talk about things that we just can't even think of, you know, and certain things get answered, certain, uh, certain energies get healed and cleared up. So the lives are always magical to me. I just feel like it's always it's always the potential for major jewels to be dropped and just magical things to be happening. And it always happens. Like we've been doing this for a couple of years now, you know, and um, I feel like I really feel good about it this time. I mean, I always feel good about it, but I, I feel good that it's so affordable now and it's going to be, you know, it's so it's the gates are like open. And this is what I have to tell y'all before we open up. Yeah. So before, I mean, because we're doing, we're doing the nine. So <laughs> I put up three fingers. Uh, we're doing, we're doing three the, times three, right? <laughs> so we're doing the nine centers, right? In nine months. And it just was so deep to me just to let you guys know, we chose the number nine. And I believe even the prices, they equal out to the number nine. And it's gonna, it's like a nine, nine, nine. And when you look into numerology, nine, 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 that's the ending. These are endings. Right now, as a humanity, we are literally ending, we're we're going towards the ending of the old ways and we're moving from the solar plexus into the heart. So I feel just on a, on a synchronistic level, working with the nine, it really helps us to release and to end old programs and to let go of things that no longer serve us so that we can open up into the 10. And the 10 is the one and the zero. The one is who you are. The zero, we can call it the matrix. We can call it creation. So when you are finished with the nine, you move into who you are. You move into self-leadership. You move into your creation energy. But this is a movement. So this movement moves you through. The 10 is a movement. And it moves you through the gate of 11. I'm on an 11 life path. I literally am standing at the gates. You move through the 11 into the 12. One plus two equals three. Three is creation. Three is masculine, feminine, and divine sonship. So this program literally is a road into this energy, into the next 5D and beyond frequency. So I just wanted to say that because that was like a major download that was coming to me about this, this program. And it wasn't even something that I was really thinking of, oh, let me just numerology, you know, do the numerology this deeply. It just came to me like, like that. And then I got an explanation of why, and it's to set us up so that we can actually exit the, the exit, the old program. And we can't do it on the seven chakra system which is what most people have been um, accustomed to learning about. Yeah, that's homo sapiens. And it's just an older version of the species. And we're transitioning out of that right now. And it's funny because even before I learned about human design, you know, I, I was an avid yoga practitioner. I studied in eight different countries. I really, really went in. But there was always just a part of me that felt like it, there was something incomplete about it, which is really hard to accept by another part of me because that's a huge old ancient tradition with like an incredible set of metaphysical scientific, you know, just truths that have helped so many people over the years. Um, but when I found human design, it kind of made me understand why I had that feeling like something is just, and I always was telling myself, oh, it's because I'm a modern person. 
but there it's the, the modern person we're actually physically different than our ancestors now we have these nine main centers rather than seven so what i like about human design is it still respects the old systems we're not going to drop kick the I Ching or forget astrology or forget the chakra system because we're in a new type of body all of that gets integrated and transmuted to the new form um i also want to say a little bit about the 2027 thing but but um did we mention what days and times? Classes? Yeah, so I'm planning for it to be on Sundays. Um, the I was really, it's going to depend on the location of the people in the class. If we don't have a lot of international people, we'll probably do it more like 1 p.m. Mountain Time, noon, something like that. Um, or, you know, we could even vote on the timing. But for example, Lori's joining us from Hong Kong at 6 a.m. for her. So 3 p.m. Mountain Time, I've just found is one of the only times of day where conceivably almost everybody on the planet could join, even though it's very early for people like Lori in Hong Kong. Thank you, Lori. Um, so I really up. appreciate you being here live. Um, so that's just been the challenge. I mean, we love the fact that we can have students literally from all over the world, but sometimes the timing gets tough for that. So um, that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, and then Kelly said she learned 11 chakra system and pranic healing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, there's more chakras. There's, yeah. yeah. But... And, and I've, and I've come across the 13 chakra system, actually, like that's even in my notes in my notebook. And I talk and I, and that was the, that was the chakra system that I was kind of connecting myself to before I even knew about the human design. Mm. But what I realized was that one, there's even more than that. But two, humanity, as a humanity, as a whole, we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. So some of us, we get privy with the knowledge of these extra, of the extra chakra centers so that we can kind of ground it in and we can kind of pioneer it in. So Kelly, you're, you're the one, you know, remember, and the one is the pioneer, the five one, the one is the pioneer. So a lot of people with the one energy, you'll get privy to a lot of the knowledge of these extra and advanced systems. Mm -hmm. And the two energy is just a double one. Mm -hmm. So you also will get knowledge and privy to advanced systems that may go beyond what we're in right now. The key here is what we're in right now so that we can anchor that in fully and because you already have knowledge of the higher chakra system as soon as this is anchored in fully like say as a humanity then the people that's already kind of in these extra chakra centers where that energy is just going to turn on even faster but we can't but we're not gonna really be it's like it's almost it's super hard to kind of express all of the power even of that energy while the majority of humanity is still believing that they only have seven chakras. So some of us, we get a lot of this advanced energy, like I say, just to pioneer it, to anchor it down so that humanity can have a template that's actually been worked on and experimented with before they go into it. So the nine center beings were here well before the nine centers became activated back in 17 back in the back in the 1700s mm -hmm. it was probably already people experiencing these energies of this nine centered energy when the world was maybe on five or seven chakras only mm -hmm. you know yeah and then now we're... yeah kelly mentioned if you include the earth star and heavenly chakra we can easily say it's a 13 chakra system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then she said, there's still many who don't know about chakras. You're reading my mind. Yeah. So some people don't know about chakras at all. I had to literally, um, I did a session not too long ago with somebody who literally it was a dude and he didn't, he did not know what chakras really was and what it was about. Mm -hmm. He heard it before though. At least he heard it before. You know what I mean? But he don't really know anything. He didn't know anything about it. Yeah, I mean, human design has only been here since the 80s. And it's, it's an, not only is it a Late new... Late 80, yeah, 80, 89, 87, 87 88, yeah. 89, something like that. So not only is it a new system, it's also, you know, 
it's a, the, the challenge with human design is you have to actually do the experiment in order to really understand and or even make a judgment on the impact you have to live it mm -hmm. so um another reason why we're doing this course and incorporating the shamanic healing is that we see a trend and this is everywhere but it, the human design community is no exception where people are getting very mental about things, gathering information. My mental authority is better than your mental authority. And we get in these mind wars. The mental ego is at war online. And who? what's really the benefit from that at the end of the day? So this is about not only actually applying the material, but getting support when the inevitable triggers come up because you know, you're in your solar plexus and you've got some weird program there because you're like me and you grew up in a house of people with defined solar plexus. So you have an issue about confrontation and working through things, right? So we can give you that information, say good luck, or we can actually support you when that stuff comes up, which is what this course is about, where you're like, hmm, I'm trying to really be different, but this is what comes up when I'm trying to change. Because if you can't get over that hurdle, then, you know, the experiment is not really, you're going to give up on the experiment. I feel like a lot of people just give up and they polarize and get even more mental because they don't want to feel everything that's in here. Once you start to empty the cups out and you look at the sludge and the molded coffee that's been in there for 20 years, you know, <laughs> real. so really if I'm just trying to be as succinct as I can. And if you've been in the school, you know, I'm not always so succinct. I can talk a lot, but this is about clearing out your vessel to be a conduit for divinity that's really what it is but in order to do that yeah you need to you need the knowledge you need the will to apply it you need to be able to speak out your boundaries and communicate with other people about why you're not the way you've always been and you're not fitting into that niche that they've had you in that makes them comfortable right and it's about healing the emotional body as well, and also the physical. Um, mm -hmm. So we are going to help you really ground in the human design knowledge so that you can apply it. Because otherwise, it's just more mental egos. And mental egos is actually what we're trying to dissolve and step out of. The whole This whole thing, when people talk about white supremacy, metaphysically, what does that mean? You could get rid of every single white person on the planet, by the way, and you would still have white supremacy. Do you know why? Because white supremacy is about mental dominance and mental decision making. It's about a disconnection from the physical realm, from the feminine, from the body. So if you're just engaging in human design knowledge and not feeling your feelings, you're in the white supremacy paradigm. So we're trying to ground this into the new paradigm which is about body consciousness and reintegrating with the feminine and actually being here, being here in the physical and, and maybe even having a good time while you're at it. So that's really, that's what this course is for. Yes. And Kelly said that, um, said that she's about midway through, oh wait, no, Cheryl. Oh yeah. Well, first, <laughs> chakras are the unseen energies that power our physiology. And yeah, to to totally. And um, so uh, Cheryl said, sounds great. I might as well follow my design. Yep. Yeah. And then Kelly again, I'm about midway through my first seven year cycle. And I feel like there's so many new aspects of HD that are emerging for me. And yeah, I'm almost eight that, years in. And didn't you even just say this morning, Kayvon is what, 10, 11 years in? 11? Since the 20, 2010. So yeah, this is your 11th year. He even said this morning that there was something that he just found out about. Yeah, like I, I can't mean, believe it. There's like, so many layers to this system. 11 years of like being in experiment with this and I'm still learning new stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's just unbelievable. You know, yeah. so it's it's so many layers, so many layers. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I had oh. it. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, to do this. When we go through, and then Tanisha says, um, when we go through each center, will we also be able to ask questions about the gates? Yes. Yep. That's why we want people there live. Um, now, we are going to um, direct you to resources where you can get more detailed information about your gate. Because remember, every gate, there's six lines, and then there's what, uh, still, a, is there a color, tone, and base on each one of those? Mm-hmm. So there's a myriad of variations of each gate. 
Yeah. Also, if you get, uh, um, you know, if you get a personal session or whatever, we can literally go over the gates. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times um, when we're doing the sessions, just to let you all know, most of the times we haven't, I haven't spoken and went over a lot of the gates with everyone is because we just haven't gotten to that energy yet. Like everybody has been going through crazy transformations, you know what I mean? Like um, in and out of the in and out of hospitals, deaths left and right, trans jobs, careers, relationships. So yeah. this is all <laughs> a part of the seven year process, right? Of just yeah. just going through the rumbles and the tumbles of living. So we eventually make it to the point to where we can go in on the gates and you know and really really flesh them out. So this is kind of that time. This is why we are offering this course, you know, for the graduates as well, because it hasn't been seven years. So it's still more learning to do, it's still more growing to do, still more expanding, it's still more mistakes to be made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when we remember that, you know, we can we'll, we can continue to keep going and spirit is going to always provide to you what it is that you can handle. You know, and I'm just so happy that we can just come up with such an affordable dang on price. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like almost no excuses when it comes to uh, just getting certain things done. You know what I mean? And I'm so happy I'm at a position now mm -hmm. in my life to where we can do something like this. Yeah. Well, and we'll still, so for people who really want to go in with us and do the apprenticeship program, which is basically all the curriculum of the full new earth self leadership Academy, but you'd be working with us one-on-one -on -one, that's still available. Um, but for now, it's not really, you have to work with us first. We have to get to know you. It is a very deep, committed, intimate relationship for us to take people through that process all the way. So that's really where the apprenticeship program is now. So it's available. Um, and of course it's gonna be at a higher price point because we're really, really working with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but my feeling was that in the current climate to do that as a group and you know open it up to 12 people, you know, finding 12 people who are ready to commit financially and time wise when everything is so kind of up in the air right now, it just wasn't feeling like the correct thing to do. Um, and we may do it again next year because it's really fun. And we just have had such an amazing experience with the relationships with the people who've been through the program. Like some of our best friends are the people who went through the program and, and, mm -hmm. and I just have really appreciated the quality of people that come through. So I anticipate having that same kind of scenario with this program where we just, you know, we attract people who are on the cutting edge. They're really open, you know, to exploring new things. They really, really want to heal and expand and step into their power. And they're really ready to like be vulnerable and do the actual work, um, which just creates a great space and we really work to make it a safe space as well so the facebook group is secret um what that means is even if somebody searches for it they can't find it so it won't show up in the search the only way you even know the group exists is if you're in the group um, and then we ask everybody to take a pledge to just not share the details of what's shared in the group outside of the group so that it is a safe space to do that group coaching and working together like that it just feels so good especially you know we have like light workers and star seeds that come to us who really have nobody in their physical reality to talk to about these things so just that social aspect i've found to be really really wonderful um yeah, yeah. because some people are i mean we had certain people that was like they came to rely on just meeting up every every Especially week or yeah, every two 2020, weeks it was kind of nice to have that mm -hmm. yeah yeah um cheryl says love you both so excited hd and ifs together a beautiful relationship absolutely so for those who aren't familiar ifs is internal family systems therapy and that's the system i trained in that i use in the shamanic healing 
And we'll be doing that in this course as well as a group. So it's basically about finding the your soul fragments who have distortions or trauma or fear or confusion and scooping them up and calling them home. So home means reconnecting them to your higher self so that they can release all that charge where they were stuck in that chaos and trauma and discontent on your timeline. You're scooping them up, bringing them back to the higher self, which is already there at the core of your being and bringing them back into present time. Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to say. This course is about going from a divided will where your energy is all over the place and scattered to integrating all that. If you want to create a magical life, if you want to really tap into your powers, you really have to have a focused will. And most people are walking around with a will that's very divided and it's not your fault, but it is our responsibility to fix it. Even though we kind of walked into this, on the other hand, we were also the ones who were there in the past. So we're reincarnating, fixing our own mess, <laughs> but whatever. Um, we're just in a society that's not really good with emotional intelligence. We don't have societally recognized regular intervals for emotional healing and clearing. Yes. And so I use the, you know, the dental hygiene analogy. If you never brush your teeth, you never floss, you never use mouthwash, you're going to end up needing a root canal. Whereas if you do it every day, even flossing, your gums won't bleed if you floss all the time. You know, your your mouth is going to be fresh. It's just a little bit of work every day. If we were to do that with our emotional bodies, our society would be so much more functional and healthy because the solutions are already here. The solutions to literally everything, the cures to everything, the cures to that thing that I'm not going to name already exists. All of it is here, but everybody's so emotionally and mentally jacked up. We can't align with it as a collective. So this is about doing your part to release lovingly and with compassion the aspects of you that are jacked up because you incarnated and it's rough down here. Mm -hmm. So when we call all of that home and we start to get a more unified will, it's really amazing. You will amaze yourself at how different life becomes and how much more effortlessly you can finally fall into that life that your soul really came here to experience. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Kelly says Nestle is an amazing experience. It is. I mean, we've done five, we've graduated five classes so far, and it is really, really incredible. Yeah. And, and, and you guys, and just to let you know, you know, um, when you do this type of work, I always tell people about beacons becoming the beacon mm -hmm. because literally this is what happens to your energy you become a beacon you start to shine and give off a different type of energy and people start to look at you a little different and they may start to ask you questions about what's going on and you may be able to help them so you know it's a whole different spectrum of energy and frequency that you become a part of when you start to do the actual true inner work you know, when you're not running away from it, you know, um, so I'm very, I'm very excited about this, um, about this new program. You know, it's just, it feels like it's, it's, it's light. It's not too heavy. You know, um, the Nestle program, it can be heavy. Like yes. it, it can, because you're getting a bunch of sessions and we are going in doing surgery. So, you know, it can be super heavy, but this one, I'm not saying that it's not you know, but um, oh, it will bring it's going to bring your stuff up. <laughs> yeah, it's going to clear things up. The but, alchemy is going to happen, but, but we'll be there as a group to support each other. Yes. And also, you know, similar with the Nestle curriculum, you know, you can now this is like a meme circling back now as a, as a joke now, but you can circle back and repeat it, you know, so after the course is done, you can start again. And in fact, once you do your first seven years of human design, you realize, oh, I'm just going to repeat that and refine and refine and refine because time isn't linear. It's circular. It's spiral. So you'll clear out one round, come back again, clear out another round. And if you treat, if we treat it more like brushing our teeth and just kind of do gentle clearings on a regular basis, it just makes us way more functional. Yes. So, yeah, yeah I really so, do want to open it up for questions unless there's anything no, else I'm, you want to. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. 
Anybody else? Any, you guys have any questions? Yeah, so feel free. You can unmute yourself or um, Raven, are you raising your hand? Okay. Go. Yeah, I'm driving and my battery's going to die soon. So I wanted to kind of jump in, but I'm almost home. Okay. Um, well, first, I feel like this is like uh, you guys are so exclusive, to, but this is like the opportunity to get access to you both. Um, and so I just wanted to say that. And it's a good thing. Like, I'm excited <laughs> you guys are offering this. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and you and, know, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Well, I have a bunch of questions, but you speak if you want to say something about it. Well, I was just going to say the exclusivity. So, you know, when we first started our journey, we were doing our work by donation, which can actually mean free in some situations. And we found in repeated scenarios that even offering the services free, whilst it can help everybody not everyone is ready for this and the fractal of people who are open not just to human design but also the ifs and the the lucid dreaming work that kayvon brings to the table it's a very small exclusive group of people and i've learned especially over the last couple of years that you know i'm just speaking for myself now i am not right now at this point in my timeline i'm not here for the general public um, I closed down my Facebook page that had almost 5,000 followers because I am not here for the general public. And it became just like a drain on my energy to have to be explaining things and bridging and bridging and bridging some more. So as we refine and we get more clear on what we're offering, for me, it feels good to be offering it to these exclusive groups because the only people who sign up for this are the people who really want to do this. So you're not going to be in there arguing with skeptics or people who just want to, you know, bash or trolls. Nobody, none of them are going to be here. So it's like the cream of the crop of people who are not only curious and interested, but are willing to actually do the work of transmutation and who, who have the courage to sit through some of this very uncomfortable stuff because they know on the other side is the reward of being in alignment, which feels so good. So yeah, we're super exclusive and we're probably going to, at least me, we're probably going to be getting more exclusive um, just because the nature of our work, we have to be. I would love it if everyone in the world were curious about human design and doing shamanic healing work. Wouldn't that be awesome? Um, as of right now, that is not the case. So we are here for this very tiny, exclusive, exquisite group of people um, to do what we do and not waste our energy trying to convince people who just who aren't in alignment, you know, with it. Pretty much. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, but you can go ahead, um, Raven. Yeah, are you? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost home. Uh, and well, uh, just a side thing is like, are you set on Sunday or are you? She's breaking up. You're breaking <laughs> up. Oh, so definitely Sunday. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So I think you, yeah, I think your question is about, are we set on Sunday? As of right now, yeah. we are, but you know, again, it's really also going to depend on who's in the group. Like, if everyone is in North America, we can have more flexibility. Um, so it's really that's going to be a major a major issue that comes into the fold. You know, if we get, you know, we have quite a few clients in Australia now. Um, we've got some clients in Europe, so it's it's kind of going to depend on the location of those people but i've also been thinking about monday too though like just to be honest with yeah, you yeah i'm good with sundays and mondays are equally good for me in terms of this um so yeah monday could be a possibility too oh is that me yeah okay um if you guys did monday would you consider after five eastern or nighttime ones I mean, I, I would be okay with it on a Monday. I'm, I'm f like, yeah. I don't know. It's so late, though. It depends on it. it, depends. it again, it would depend. Yeah, it would depend if there's overseas people and what that means, you know. But that could actually, that would work okay for Europe. I don't know how that works for Hong Kong. And um, so, yeah. So, Tanisha, you, you have a daytime job commitment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I 
until five. Yeah, see, that's one of the other reasons I was leaning towards Sunday, Sunday. because oh. even people who have like a, a daytime job commitment typically aren't working on Sundays. So, yeah. Yeah, we got we to gotta figure out which day we're going to do it on. Yeah. So, you know, we, we can do a vote too, but it would be, it, it will be probably Sunday or Monday. I mean, don't Friday. you feel? I won't do Fridays. Oh, yeah, That's Friday. my no, spiritual no. Oh, work yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Saturdays I can do. Saturday, Sundays, or Mondays. So we'll, we 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 would vote. Yeah. Did you have another question, Raven, or a comment? Can you still hear me? Yeah. I do. I'm almost home though. Like I'm like five minutes. So um, I, if somebody else wants to ask a question, I'll be able to have better service as soon as I as soon as I pull in. Okay. Yeah, we'll wait. So let's open up the floor. If there's anybody else who's got comments or questions or something to add to the debate. Otherwise, I can also talk about the 2027 thing. And don't be shy. Yeah. Don't be shy. You can also post in the message board. So yeah, while we're waiting, because sometimes people kind of have to work up the nerve or sometimes and you just got to gotta formulate something. your question. Yeah. yeah, that's the other thing I'll just mention now, which I like about the group coaching, especially with us, because this, you know, this isn't going to be a huge group. It's a group, but it'll be intimate. Um, you know, you can really like benefit from other people's questions. And some people like when you don't have a defined throat, it can be difficult to to get that energy organized to ask the question. Oh yeah, I didn't talk about that yet. Um, so like Kelly's here, she's a great example. So Kelly was great at asking questions when she was in Nestle and it just helps everybody. And she doesn't even have a defined throat. It just helps everybody because a lot of times um, you'll bring something up that other people are like, hey, I hadn't even thought about that. Or, oh yeah, that's what I was trying to articulate. I didn't find the words. So I like that about the group scenario. Um, but we also, you know, there's going to be enough time for one on one over nine months. You, you, you'll be able to get your own personal questions answered between the, the webinars and the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to just talk about the larger picture of the 2027 you know, that's coming up. Question? Oh, do you want to? I mean, I can just direct them to the website. Or yeah, do you want to talk yeah, about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's a question about the price commitment for the course. So if you are not a Nestle alumni, it's 144 US dollars a month. For Nestle alumni, it's going to be $99 a month. So we do have um, we do have the registration available on the website now on the homepage. Um, I think it says join now or something. You can just click on the button if you want to register. Um, for What's the website, activationcoaching.com. Um, and for those who would like to pay in full, you get two free private sessions, one with Kayvon and one with me. Um, okay, here's a good question. Diana asks, what's an example of clearing your vessel of false programs so I understand where you're coming from? I want to use the example I used in the clubhouse group. Okay. About the root. So here's an example, Diana. The root center. People who have their root center undefined just universally tend to fall into this pattern where they have a belief that they have to get everything done on their to do list in order to feel free, to feel like they can relax, to feel like they're okay in the world. I have a defined root center, so I'm not really supposed to hold that program, but I was raised by a mother who has an undefined root. And I think she also has one of those busybody channels mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. So my mother was a busybody. And in my house, like if you were relaxing or something, it was like always suspect. So there was all this pressure to constantly be busy doing something, achieving, moving, like just sitting around relaxing. It was, it was like, it made her nervous. So then I couldn't relax. Um, so that's an example of a false program. So the correct program, if you have the undefined route, is to just with some sort of mantra, remind yourself, I am already free. Whether or not the to-do list gets done, I'm already free right now in this moment. 
so that you can get some space around that and step back from that. Because all of us, I'm telling you, all of us are carrying false programs that are choking the life force out of us, choking the joy out of our life. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's just diverting all of our attention and our and our energy. What I've learned, what I'm learning, is that attention is actual energy. Oh yeah. And if your attention <laughs> is constantly on just trying to live up to someone else's expectations or or living within someone else's programs and constantly trying to do that and you you're focusing on just not ever tripping and falling you know because you know and having this real tight existence that's a lot of energy being just expended on keeping that energy up mm -hmm. and we we need energy when it comes to manifestation and rearranging our emotional systems and all of that, like in mental systems, we, we actually need energy. So clearing out the centers will free up that energy and allow you to actually apply it towards your physical beingness mm -hmm. so that you can experience true change, you know, an actual totally new reality. Yeah, it goes back to having a divided will versus a unified will, right? So if I'm running false programs that, that aren't even correct for m the way that I'm structured, my will is getting watered down, it's getting misdirected, it's getting diluted. Um, so if I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off, feeling like I have to get everything done every single day, um, the ironic reality is that I'm actually not going to be effective. I'm going to be busy, but I'm not going to be effective. And I'm sure as heck not going to be happy. Right. So it's really, really tough if you're stressed out, overwhelmed and like running on a, a, a lane that's not even built for you to get to where your soul really wants to be. Right. It's really hard to call in the partner you really want, the job, the, the home, et cetera. So this is about, you know, checking what's in these cups, in these centers. What am I holding here that's really just not serving me? And the beauty of this approach is that we can let it all go with forgiveness. Like I don't have to hold like anger at my mom because she had that program because it's not her fault that she had that program. Nobody told her about human design. Um, you know, she just she came from a family with no money and had like the hustle scramble mentality. And that's what she did. So with this, I can understand mechanically why that was so exacerbated in her and I can let it go. So the beauty of that is like having this knowledge, it also takes back a lot of energy that gets sucked into questioning, confusion, debating. We don't have to do any of that anymore. Oh, this is just not correct for me. I'm going to move into the way that is correct for me. Oh, look at all this energy that's freed up. Look at all these resources. Look at all this money that's freed up. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you for that question, Diana. Yeah. Hi, Yamalet. Hi, Yamalet. Welcome. We're actually doing Q and A right now. Um, Yamalet in the building. Welcome, Yamalet. We're doing Q and A. Yeah, go ahead, Raven. You're welcome to. Okay. Thanks. I also saw a coyote right, which I never see right as I was driving uh, home just now um, so first of all I will say like two four manifester open head open totally open solar plexus it has felt challenging <laughs> uh, lately and um, mm -hmm. you know I am a truth seeker so I've been opening myself up to all the different you know debates I've tagged you guys a couple of times and I've, I've come fully full circle um, on it all. <laughs> um, but I will, I, I have a question about the seven year deconditioning process because through my truth seeking uh, research, I've ran into so many human design experts that experts that have been um, doing the, the human, doing human design for maybe just a few years. Um, and it's, it's, they're really smart. Right. Um, and then there's people now saying like, oh, I don't believe in the the seven year deconditioning process. I don't believe in that. Um, so that was like one question I had. And then I just would love for you guys to just touch on, I know this is a big debate, 
um, and it's not a debate anymore for me. It's, it's, but this whole like sidereal, true sidereal thing, are you willing to just share your thoughts on it? Cause I've been wanting to hear what you guys had to think. And this is like my only time to get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of yeah. questions. Yeah. So these so. are great questions. Thank you. <laughs> See, here's a great example when, and she's got the defined throat as a manifester, but thank you for generously asking that because everybody can benefit and it helps us to focus the conversation on what's going to serve you. So, so the first part of the question, first question, seven year deconditioning. Okay. And so yeah. seven year can decondition. Oh my goodness. And this, this seven year deconditioning is almost it's I feel like it's the same debate energy of do I have to wait until I'm 50 as a six in order to actually live my life or to uh, make it to my whatever goals. So the issue with this seven year deconditioning thing is and the reason why a lot of teachers are having mixed energies about it is because time linear time as we know it is pretty much fading away. And because linear time is fading away, a lot of us are tapping into future energies. We're tapping into mm -hmm. our future cycles. So once the gate is broken open, which is what happens when you get your session, you start to get this flood of knowingness and, and you start to feel very solid in your energy because you're tapping into a more of a future aspect of yourself. Now, as far as growth wise, look at it like a plant, like a seed, a, a seed that's growing, a plant that's growing from seed. Can you grow that seed without it going through the process of breaking through the membrane, going through the soil, pushing up from the soil, then reaching the sun for the first time and then becoming a flower? The seven year process, the seven year deconditioning process is that it's the process of your seed breaking open. So we shouldn't even really want to eliminate that seven year process because that seed growing through the dirt, through the through the grime, through the pressure, that is what creates that beautiful flower at the end of the day. It's not putting the seed into the soil and then couple days later you got a beautiful flower yeah that's magic <laughs> that'll be amazing but it takes the whole beauty in of 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 going through the game of going through the process we came down here on earth not to have 100 percent our spiritual abilities that we have when we don't have a body we came down here to experience the spiritual energy a lot slower so that we can learn more so the seven year process is something that I've learned that it's not that it's just happening. It's almost, it's, it's a must, but because we're out of time now, we don't have that grip on time anymore. We can feel as if we don't need it or, or as if we can hurry up, we can make it go by faster. I had the same thing. I feel like I'm a super nerd. I knew in my mind, I said, oh, it ain't gonna take me no seven years to, <laughs> I know how to read. I can read. I can read and, and absorb. Mm -hmm. But after seven years, it literally it took seven years and still I'm still learning. But at seven years is when we when I moved, you know, we oh, officially yeah. moved into the house. Yeah. And it was like wild. Like it literally took seven years for me to leave the couch to 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 my to get into my house. And that was my whole thing was I was trying to get into I was trying to become myself. So me getting my house at the end of seven years was equivalent to me becoming me, becoming who I actually, like I finally came back to my house, to my body, to the real Kayvon. After all these years, it took me all of this time to finally put a crown on my head when I've been feeling like I've been wanting to wear a crown since I was a child. But I was playing other people's games. I was filled up, my open centers was filled up with so many other people's dreams and ideas and ways of being. Mm -hmm. That I that I just was I never I was gone from home a long time. So, you know. I got a lot to say about that, if I may. Yeah, so so seven <laughs> okay. so the seven centers, you know, seven years. 
seven years, seven years of focus. We're out of time anyway, you won't feel it. And that's just the truth. You just will not feel these seven years. Like I did not feel it. I just studied my human design every single day. I mean, not study, I just followed my strategy and authority. And literally after seven years, it was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even believe it was seven years. It happened so fast. See, I feel like it was a whole lot of moments in those seven years. And you're like, I didn't feel a thing. I was like, I felt every second no, of no, it. No, it was moments though. <laughs> it was some big moments, but I can't even well, think no. of it. Well, some of it was really joy. It was a whole journey, you know? It was mm -hmm. a whole journey. Totally. But here's my here's a couple things. And Ra speaks about this. So if if you are 65 years old when you find human design, you better believe it's going to take you seven years because you incarnated at a very dense time on the planet and you got your butt kicked six ways, seven ways, 18 ways to Sunday. And you got a lot more residue in your cup to clear out. So Raven, if somebody is maybe 18 years old when they find human design and they're like, I don't think it's going to take me seven years to figure this out. You know, there may be something to that in the sense that they have less to work through. And this is why, you know, there, there's a lot of debate about like the elders and the youngsters in the spiritual community, even an elder who has corruption and distortion, they have experience. You know, there's something to be said for living through something, living through an experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the issues. The second issue is the seven year deconditioning process is about releasing the conditioning that happened to all of us in the first seven years. So our first seven years, I mean, really the brain doesn't finish developing till 25. So you're really going through at least three of these seven year cycles where you're just absorbing. But those first seven years, we're not even, the personality isn't even fully charged up yet. You're in your design, you know, the unconscious part of your human design. You have no filters or very few filters. You know, there are some people who come in and they, you can tell that they've been on, on the planet before, you know, they seem a little more advanced, but even them, they're soaking stuff in. You're learning a language, you're learning behaviors, you're learning socialization. So all that stuff is getting crammed in the first seven years. So it takes seven years at least to get that out. And I, I just, I'm not sure what the motivation is to want to hurry up through that. My sense is that that's a mental ego thing that doesn't want to feel the process and wants to skip ahead of the line. And there's certain things in life where you cannot skip ahead. You have to walk the path. You have to walk through it. Yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't have incarnated. And I would have just been sending you guys little messages as a, as a spirit guide, like, you got this, girl. And I'd be <laughs> sitting on a cloud in heaven not dealing with this. There's something about the actual experience that cannot be replaced. The mind thinks everything can heal like this. Now, on a certain quantum level, you can have miraculous instant healing. But anybody who's been through the Nestle program or done a session with me, you know there's mercy in going slowly. If you went in and pulled all your trauma out of your system, your nervous system would be so fried, number one. Number two, you wouldn't know who you are. It would be difficult to function. It's like rehabbing your whole entire house overnight. You don't know where anything is. Yeah, sure, it's nice and pretty, but like you still have to get oriented. We're organic beings. And I feel like people who want to rush through this, they're polarized to the mental masculine side. They're not respecting body consciousness. They're not respecting the feminine. So. Well said, well said. Yeah. Um, so uh, Roxanne, I see that you put your hand up. I'm going to um, come to you after answering the second part of this question. Oh. Now to answer the tap into the second part of the question that uh, Raven asked about the sidereal. Oh, I forgot even all about Yeah, that's yeah. a whole other topic. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> why that got yeah. deep. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, with the sidereal thing, and um, I was being quiet about it big time, Raven, simply because I was just doing more research and looking into it because I was, I had already looked into the sidereal thing a while back, and it was like blowing my mind, um, the sidereal astrology. So for people who may not know, the sidereal astrology is connected is connected to more of the ancient Vedic system from when I was doing my research, but it's also connected in directly with the constellations. So right now, if you had a sky sky app 
and you were to look at it in the sky, they say well, we, we're supposed to be in Pisces, so, so they'll say the sun is in Pisces. So you take your sky app and you look up like, and I did this the other day. I did this like maybe last week when they said that we went into Pisces on the 20th. So I did it like a little bit, like just maybe two days after that. And I put the sky thing up, I put the app up to the sky and I saw that the sun was actually still in Capricorn. So a lot of the confusion was coming in because it's like, wait a minute, if the sun is in Capricorn, and but you know, it's saying that we're in Pisces, then what the heck are we going by? So it caused it, it, it was bringing a lot of confusion into the astrology community and in all of the communities, really. But when it comes down to the human design, and it is true, but tropical and sidereal, the tropical, what I learned the difference, and the reason why it's different is because the tropical astrology is based on the seasons. It's based on the, the equinoxes and the shiftings, what the download I was getting, you know, it's like as we shift, you know, uh, the magnetics, the, the magnetics on the planet is shifting all the time. So it's kind of, it's doing something that's kind of taking us out of alignment with that direct sidereal energy. The sidereal will give you the truth of where the sun is in the position of, but the tropical it's different because it's not it's not aligned directly with the constellations. It's aligned more so with the seasons. Right, and if you don't, if you use sidereal, doesn't it distort the gates? Yeah. So yeah. when with human design, the gates and the channels they're not determined through the constellations. They're determined via the equinox right. and the seasons, just like the tropical. So for the human design um, purposes, it literally it's it's in perfect alignment with. It's in perfect alignment with the tropical energy because the only way to have the channels and the gates is via the tropical system. The sidereal system, it it um it removes certain channels and it replaces them and puts them in other positions that's not true to who you are because of the position you were at when you were born. So it's not really so much is connected to your physicalness but when you when it comes to the cycles within the human design they use the sidereal so this was another thing that like right. blew my mind the human design actually does use the sidereal it just does it with the transit and the cycles like the saturn return chiron and all of that it's it actually uses the sidereal because that's for whatever reason the sidereal is more accurate when it comes to the to the big giant cycles than it is um when it comes to just explaining the gates and the channels so it will throw you off if you were to calculate your human design with the sidereal calculation because it'll remove certain channels and gates because the gates don't in channels they don't rely on the constellations like that it has everything to do with the equinoxes and uh you know the seasons mm -hmm. cool yeah i'm i'm in full agreement and that was kind of where i came back around and i was looking at megalithic structures and was like there are so many built to honor the equinoxes that don't ever change and i think that's the the shift is that like tropical they're like oh it's the stars but actually tropical is like the earth-based seasonal signs, and that can be like the disconnect. I just wanna to speak to that comment. Um, for the record, I'm a manifester. I'm not trying to skip my deconditioning process. It's a lot of projectors actually on Instagram, mostly that I've ran into that are, you know, that this is their business, their profession, um, that have said like, we don't we don't need to decondition. Not everyone though, that's like I'm not, and I don't think it's fair to categorize like any aura type as like, you know, who's trying to skip the deconditioning process. Just for it's actually manifesting generators that skip steps mm -hmm. more than manifesting. Right. <laughs> but, but I knew it was a projector. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Cause that's the way so, I remember when I, when I first heard, when I first saw it as a, pro, you know, I'm a projector. So I was like, the ego projector mind popped in. Oh, you ain't gotta wait no seven years. Yeah. Cause the mental world doesn't have to wait for anything. It's like one, you know, one firing in the brain. 
but <laughs> this is what this is what's so ironic and just kind of makes me laugh because you got to understand i've been in the in the healing arts industry for almost 25 years so i've seen the same thing happen in the yoga community in the dance community in the ifs community in the human design community everybody wants to get ahead of where they are none of us can just sit the f down and be where we are we have such a hard time with that because we need to decondition if you're deconditioned, it's a lot easier to accept where you are because there's not all this tension and unresolved shit in your system that's making you crazy. So mm -hmm. it's also not surprising that it's projectors saying this because they're naturally mental. So in the mental realm, you it's got quick. the idea, you got it. It's done. No de deconditioning needed. So here's the thing. The fact is, until you've gone through the seven years, you can't actually say if the seven years matters or not. Oh, it matters. Just like in the Ashtanga yoga community, you'd have people coming in and they're like gymnasts and they can do crazy back bends and nothing for them to put their head behind their head, and their uh, feet behind their head and their arms are super strong. And they wanted to advance way beyond everybody else who'd been there for six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. And it's like that system is not just about gymnastics. There is a huge change that happens in your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual bodies when you do this particular combination of asanas. But their ego was so excited to be at the head of the line, they ended up injuring themselves or looking like a fool. So we've all, and everybody's susceptible to that, not just projectors, not just manifestors, every type has blind spots and can be egotistical. The other thing about all this stuff about people like dissing Ra, did you speak to a supernova though? <laughs> did you did you have a supernova come and speak to you for eight days and give you a download that had never been on the planet if not maybe you could sit back and learn something from this dude right but he's a 5-1 manifester so of course he's gonna like prickle people and stuff like that his delivery is that of a 5-1 delivering a heretical message at a time when the planet was way more dense than it is right now there wasn't online you know co co groups of light workers and star seeds like you couldn't talk about that in public you couldn't say things like that you know that's that's where they start sending you to a psychiatrist and putting you on drugs so the context of when he came in, he had to deliver a lot of his messages with like a negative cynical slant because that's what he was dealing with, a lot of density. So human design and the way that it's taught and experienced, it's going to mutate, it's gonna expand, it's gonna change. Now we have a lot of like these original human design people who learn directly from Ra, who present very differently than him, like Karen Curry Parker. She's a 6'2", manifesting generator, much softer energy, very different. But at the end of the day, it's mechanical and it requires experimentation. So while the mental stuff is exciting and I'm just like everybody else, I can fall into that wanting to just drink all the juice because it's so interesting. If we don't apply it, if we don't do the experiment, we just don't know. And the ego has to surrender to that. Damn, I actually don't know. Oh, and if you and if you try to go too fast if you try to go faster than your system is supposed to you get what we call injured yeah and some of us are having a lot of issues with injuries simply because our system your system is trying to skip ahead and it's trying to hurry up and get to the goal it's trying to hurry up and make things happen and our job is to just chill out strategy and authority strategy and inner authority strategy and inner authority but learning these systems and learning that you know how to clear this clutter out it'll help you to relax a lot more um so uh roxanne she just had to step into the doctor's office oh i should have asked her a question but i was trying to cover all these juicy excellent things yeah um Okay. Because Raven brought up the great the great questions. Oh, I could just talk about 2027 until Roxanne comes back. Um, Michelle, I might need to um like make that a meme if you don't mind. <laughs> which one? Which what's that? Ra, Ra, like a picture of Ra saying like, did you did you talk to a supernova though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you talk to a supernova? That that's is the thing. I mean, I saw this in the yoga community too. I saw it in the I was in a, a stepper in Chicago in the dance community. Like it's just the, the ego will come up with the most sophisticated ways 
to be in competition, to try to diminish other people and to avoid the discomfort of our own awakening and transmutation. And all of you who have worked with me before, you know that it can be done and there's beauty and joy in healing the emotional body. But to rush it, to put pressure in that process, it's cruel and only a mind disconnected from the feeling body is going to have even that as an idea but projectors are naturally the mental people so we we can have grace and forgive them it's okay it's, i mean people can forgive us. people can say and do whatever they want at the end of the day this is about you as an individual figuring out who you are and deciding if you have the courage to be your divine self or not end of conversation yeah so and that and that's a and that's a real question because when you you you've experienced it so raven graduated from our program when you start to get into this when you're really looking in the mirror it's very sobering it's very humbling but it's also beautiful and expansive so the ego is like afraid of it but then you get there and it's like oh my gosh how could i have resisted this because the ego just doesn't know and we don't have good practices for this type of stuff yet but, but we also have been taught and told, you know, to do our best and to never and to try not to do your best not to mess up. Mm -hmm. And that one little phrase, you know, do your best, you know, to do your best to try not to mess up. And what happened now is you got a whole bunch of people that's afraid to do things because they don't want to mess things up. You got people who are afraid to go into their power because you don't want to blow things up because you feel you're going to get so mad one day that you're just gonna blow stuff up. And our job is to just understand that this reality was made for us. It wasn't made for anything outside of us, it was made for us. So it can handle everything that we are going through at all times. And we can handle everything that we're going through at all times. Well, and that's a real important point because when you're in distortion and you're in what in human design is called the not self in, in the emotional clearing, we would call this just distorted parts of you. It's everything is so much harder. It's so much harder. It's so much harder to try to be something that you're not. And the, the tricky thing is, is that people who really loved us and meant well, were trying to make us be something we're not. So not only is that false program in there, but there's also these social, mental, emotional, sticky things, hooks that are there because, you know, the two-year-old in you, you know, got spanked if you didn't do what mommy said. And the seven-year-old and you got ostracized because you didn't obey the teacher and keep your mouth shut, even though the class was super boring and you're a manifester or manifesting generator and you didn't want to sit still, you know? So we have this, it's just, it's so far back in our consciousness. Um, so getting in there and pulling it out, it's just so important. And it's a time staking process because there's just so much of it. Mm -hmm. Our, our hope, and I feel that it's it's um, realizable, is that these future generations aren't going to be living a childhood that they have to recover from, but rather they'll be in alignment as children. And then, just imagine if we if we didn't have to do this work. Imagine if this is something that was just everybody went through this in, in primary school and this wasn't even a question and everybody could live being who they are and other people would respect that like how much more delightful our situation would be for real so roxanne oh here she, she is it. you want me to read it it don't matter so my question was in relation with respect to the seven-year deconditioning michelle touched base on it but i believe for me it's not so much a rush to the finish line rather it's yearning for clarity yes yes and yes just to let you know this is why so I, i'm so happy that we're given this like after the fact that we've already went through the seven years right yeah because we're not just this is this isn't just up in the air right like we're threes so we're not theoretical people like you got to understand this is why i'm a six three i have a huge chip on my shoulder about this but like whatever i preach and teach i took the medicine first when you go to the white coats they can't say that i learned yoga by spending every penny i had and going overseas and 
I learned about shamanism and sorcery by putting myself in very dangerous situations to learn and to get the messed up stuff knocked out of me. Like I went through this, I put my life on the line. So for us, this isn't like a theoretical thing where we memorize a text and now we're repeating it back to you. Like we are living this. It's not a hobby for us. Like, yeah, we do have an Airbnb that helps us pay like the bills of the house, but we do this full time. This is our life. So, you know, when people come in and they just jumped in the game and they're like, oh, I know everything because I read three books and I'm going to argue with people who've been doing it for 20 years, which I've seen, by the way, in the human design community, newbies come in, they're very rude. And it's like, you don't even know what you don't know yet. Like, that's one thing I learned halfway through my seven year process. I stumbled upon something. I don't know if it was in your books or online. And it was some chart about, I don't even remember what it was, but I didn't even know that human design offered that information. So I didn't even know that was a question that human design could answer for me because I just didn't know. So it's really okay to be here now and not know and surrender to the process. But it's like, that's very frightening for our ego. Mm -hmm. It's just frightening. Yeah. And, and the yearning for clarity is something that happens. It's something that happens as you stick with the experiment, as you follow your strategy literally you start to become clearer and clearer every day so mm -hmm. clarity is something that we're all yearning for literally and i'm talking about on the spirit level like this is going to be something that you're going to be yearning for until the end of time and, and then the beginning of the next time so it's 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 okay to have that yearning for the clarity and just wanting to be clear but know that you are getting it every single day the fact that you got a session done literally it started the process this this is a this is a mechanical process that your cells is literally going through every day mm -hmm. when you start when you see that chart and you see those nine centers something in your body chemistry starts to activate and things just start to get released and you start to just wake up every single day and you reach clarity more and more. It's just sticking with it and gaining more knowledge, gaining more awareness. I think one of the reasons that this even comes up, though, is that there's two levels to clarity. There's a clarity you can have any moment right now when you just connect with your higher self who's always in clarity. Why is the higher self always in clarity? Because it never leaves unity consciousness. It is always 100% aware that we're never really born and we never really die. It's always aware that all sentient beings are connected and we're all expressions of the same divine source. That's clarity. Then there's a whole other layer of the game of like, but what do I eat for dinner tonight though? <laughs> The, mm -hmm. the so-called devils in the details. Cause yeah, I can be clear. Oh, I'm a limitless being here for all time eternal. But then it's like, oh, but now you're a parent and your child has a different design than you. And they're, they're not just gonna follow the form you're imposing on them. So what do you, where's your clarity now? If we're all limitless beings, why is there conflict in our house? If we're all one unified being, why is there conflict? Oh, wait, what, what, what? So there's the clarity that's available any moment right now that you can drop into, but then there's the details and the complexity of being a limitless, eternal being having a limited physical experience. This is about the, the metaphysics of your physical design for this incarnation. And it's complicated. And it's going to take time to figure it out. And even after your seven years, you're still going to be figuring stuff out and that's okay. So really, generally speaking, we are afraid of being in our bodies. We are afraid of our emotions. We are afraid of those, those repeat mental loops at the back of our head. We can't seem to get rid of. So when we mentally get a download of a system like this, it's really tempting to say, I've arrived. I'm done. I got it. Good. Your body can't keep up with that. The mind can lie, the body cannot. The body's not gonna say, oh, I got this and five, got this, I got it. No, the body's mm -hmm. gonna be like, slow down. Mm -hmm. Give me a few months just to even take in what we just talked about today. Because the body has to live it. And think of how abusive we're being to ourselves by not allowing the body that seven years of time, by not allowing those, 
first seven years of inner children that are still inside of you holding what amounted to abuse, not even your parents didn't even have to be abuses, but it amounted to abuse because they were imposing a not self scenario on you. Why can't we give ourselves the grace of seven years to heal from that? especially when there's not even necessarily a bad guy. It would be easy if there was just a bunch of bad people on the planet. We could round them up, kill them off. Everybody's great. Ding dong, the witch is dead. That's not how it works. There's a lot of innocent people doing harm because we just don't know. So we need the time to heal from this. Give ourselves that grace, not put pressure on ourselves. And that's the other thing. I'm not surprised why this issue is coming up with projectors because our dear projectors have so much pressure to be successful all the time. Because if you're not successful as a projector, you don't get recognized. If nobody's recognizing you, you're not getting invitations. If you're not getting invitations, you're not gracefully tapping into life force energy and it feels like you're dying. And you ain't getting paid to pay you're bills not. to <laughs> even buy the food, so you will be done. And so then on top of that, <laughs> you're getting disrespected as being a bum because because you're not keeping up with the energy beings. So let's make it very clear. Thousand percent forgiveness to anybody who's holding that that idea that I can skip the seven years. Yeah. So Diana said, uh, she, she says, um, what if you want to fast track because you don't want to be here on earth because it's so dense. So you got to deal with why you don't want to be here. And one of the main things that I, that I, that I teach people about and I speak to them about is mm -hmm. this reality mirror and how the world around you because we we haven't been taught this the world around you is a mirror of you and the dense the denseness that we see outside of us is the denseness that we have inside of us yeah but we don't want to face these things we we feel as if we are beyond it because we can see it so you are right though you if you can see it you are slightly above it or you can also still be in it while you're seeing it so your job is to know that this world is a reflection when you understand that and you take that into account all the way 100 percent, it'll match you but even with you not taking that into 100 percent, you know like it's still matching you regardless of what it is that we believe like this is the truth the truth is the world is your reflection and the more and more you become aware of that the more and more you see it the more and more you start to uncover it and the more and more you see it and you realize it's you the more forgiveness you do you put in for yourself because you ain't gonna want to be hating yourself for too long yeah. you're gonna start working on it forgiving it and then as you start to see it it's gonna start to go away literally like pages opening up in a book you know it, so it, it was like that for me, like um, I, I wanted to escape all the time. And that was one of the main reasons why I was so hyped up and heavy into my lucid dream and out of body experience work, because I was so tired of being on this dang on in this reality. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize that no matter where I go here was always with me. Yeah. So the biggest download I got today was about the I am in here. And I am here, here I am, right? Here and I am, it's the same place. You can never escape it. So you can say, let me get up out of here, it's too dense. And then next thing you know, you go to you go into another reality that's it just is, is dense. But we believe when we leave this form that that's the end of all things, or we go into somewhere that's super like no physicality continues physicality goes until i mean i haven't met anyone who has ever really chilled out on the non-physical realms too deeply mostly all of the <laughs> all of the group i mean when they do it they can barely even explain it but yeah. most people when they talk about enlightenment and going into the higher new earth realms and all of that stuff they're going into physical realities that do carry denseness right it's just that the denseness the the denseness is a lot lighter in certain realities but if you haven't cleared up the muck and the clutter and you haven't cleared out that glass then you're here wherever that here may be whether it's on earth or another planet or another frequency will still be matching your internals mm -hmm. because in all realities the reality is is matching you the reality mirror is not only an earth knowledge this goes beyond the body 
right? It's mechanical. Yes. You know, if I don't speak French, I hate croissants and I have no interest in the Eiffel Tower. It's going to take a lot more to garner the willpower to get to France. Whereas if I'm studying French, I watch French movies, I listen to French music, I cook French cuisine, I've got all my focus on that. That's what I'm aligned with. I mean, that's a really gross, mm -hmm. dense example, mm -hmm. but a lot of us, you know, save your star seed light workers who are here to save the planet. We're here to save the planet from the mess that we created. We were here in Lemuria. We were here in Atlantis. We were here in the 19, I mean, we, it's us, it's all us. And even if, see, I have a weird thing about the past lives thing. And I have issues about claiming certain past lives because I'm never really certain is there some linear thing that has to do with this Michelle Gaza character actually having been that in a past life? Or is that just me tapping into the Akash and the allness and knowing that a part of me as source went through that, right? So sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. Sometimes you can tell it's really your own thing because it's so intense. And I've seen this a lot come up in private sessions with clients where they have a very specific past life memory and it's personal. But there's also just the collective memories, right? So collectively, we've screwed up again and again. So collectively, us high vibe tribe people, we're here now to, to fix what we broke. And also there's a really great chance of us succeeding right now because of all these things that are happening, you know, interdimensionally with our place in the solar system and all that, right? So, so we're here because we need to be here. And it, it was really shocking for me over the last few years to really come to the realization because you, you can get really conditioned to see God as something that's the all-knowing, almighty thing above you that you can't touch. But when you start to dissolve a lot of that and you really connect with your own inner divinity, you realize that God itself or source itself is still figuring itself out. Source is still trying to figure out who it is. So that means there's room for trial and error. That yes. means we're going to keep incarnating with room to grow and expand and, and, and fix things because source is still trying to figure itself out. It's not like source is this separate thing that's got it all clear, you know, and we don't have to go through this. Otherwise, we'd never need to incarnate and source would never needed to have split into 8 billion people, right? So it's here. Now, that is a really hard paradox when it comes to things like trafficking children and stuff like that. It gets very confusing, but even that we can look into and see why those things are happening. Um, and sometimes there's collective karma that's the issue versus your personal karma, mm -hmm. which human design also speaks to, but I feel like that could be a whole other lecture. Mm -hmm. um, Any other questions? Yeah, she said, Diana said, yes, well said, the past and present and future is the now, the here, yes. Yes. And then Raven said, I want to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. You, you totally can. Yeah. And, and what well, I, she's but, a projector dream body, though. But totally. And yeah. but but also what I realize is the way that these human do the the way that it, it works out is the manifester is here for peace, and within that peace, she'll find satisfaction, mm -hmm. success, and surprise. Mm -hmm. Generators are here for satisfaction. Within that satisfaction, they'll find success, peace, and surprise. Projectors, we're here for success. Within our success, we'll find satisfaction, peace, and surprise. Mm -hmm. And reflectors, they're here for surprise. Within that, they'll find success, satisfaction, and peace. And that's how the game goes. We're all one. We're all, we're all here to reach the same goal. It's just we're going about it in our own specific ways because we're different, because we want to see, because we're seeing things through our own eyes from a different angle, from a different spectrum, from a different type of geometry. Mm -hmm. So when you know that, then you totally accept what it is that you are, because what you are is still connected to everything else. It's just you're going to be more so bent. You're going to be more so, you know, handling the peace part of the game because if you don't handle the peace then i won't have peace within my success 
I'll have a lot of success, but then it'll be super chaotic. Mm -hmm. I want my success to be peaceful and I want to be satisfied and I want to have surprises every now and again. Yeah. And as a manifesting generator, I don't want a success that doesn't have satisfaction and peace. I mean, like, it's funny because even before I knew human design, I was so aware of this. I, I graduated from Yale University. So I had a network giving me offers to do all type of jobs, six figures, big money, work on Wall Street. And I decided I wanted to be a yoga instructor. And I actually had friends laughing at me in my face, laughing at me. But I knew that sitting in a room on Wall Street, clicking a keyboard, even if I earned a million dollars a year, I would have killed myself because I, and now being a manifesting generator, I have language to explain it. I can't sit still in front of a computer all day. I don't care what you're paying me. For me, that's slavery. Somebody else might find that to be a great opportunity and mm -hmm. they may jump at it. You know, I chose the satisfaction of following my path. I mean, part of it for me is that by the time I graduated college, I was so suicidal. I was like, I, I have to heal or I'm going to, I'm not going to make it period. I'm not going to make it either because I kill myself or disease kills me. I didn't really feel like I had a choice. So people laughing at me, I just kind of let it go because I'm like, you can laugh, but I also see what you're going, doing and you're not in alignment either. So your laughter doesn't really mean much to me. So I went and I followed that path. And guess what? I was broke through all my twenties and most of my thirties. I was broke because I was going for what was satisfying me as opposed to the short-term success that our society says you're supposed to go for. Parents were just couldn't even believe it. They just tugging their hair, couldn't understand. Like they invested in my education and here I am looking like this yoga bum, but it's what I had to do because I just would not have been satisfied with any of those other things, even if I had become a millionaire doing them. And I just knew that about myself. So that makes us really different because a lot of people would say that I'm crazy for making that choice and that's their right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. I have one last question. And then I know, I mean, again, it's just because I, I never get to talk to you guys. Um, we like love this. your questions. And, Thank you. And, and, you know, like, again, I have a totally open head, totally open solar plexus, and I've opened myself up to being this truth seeker on seekers library. So I felt like it was important to do my own research, but it's definitely spun me out of my, um, of like looking at my, my chart because I'm like, oh, and then there's this other chart and now there's this other chart. So now I have three charts and it's been like kind of hard for me to orient myself with all of it. And the last question I have about this, um, and, and, and again, I've come back around and I understand um, the reasoning for using tropical and it was important for me to go on that, my, my own research journey to get there. But my final question about this is, what would you say about all these different people now that are like, I never resonated with my tropical and now I have my true sidereal and this is like, this is exactly who I am. Um, and variations of that of like, oh, I could, you know, see some, like I find some things in my uh, sidereal that are similar, um, but some are like totally different. So what would you say to the people who are like, this resonates with me so much more? Well, well, some of the sidereal energy, some of the sidereal chart actually overlaps with the tropical. So at the end of the day, yeah. the energies are not that far away. And what I learned is the confused, uh, it, it, it's like, it's not that far away. It's like, um, I don't know, like. Some people's are markedly different. Yeah, some of them are markedly different, but some of them are, they have a lot of similarities. Like some of the sidereal actually <clears throat> coincides with the tropical at the same time. So it can be, they can still feel that it's connected. It's really difficult to answer that question unless you do it on a case by case basis, because this is what I've seen. So a, a friend of ours who did have a reading, I didn't push anything out, did I? Mm. Um, she did have a reading with Kayvon and at one point she was talking to me about gene keys because she discovered that a few years later and was saying all these things that she got out of the gene keys that the human de design just doesn't provide. And I was like, what are you talking about? And then I realized 
oh yeah, she doesn't live with the human design coach. So she just actually didn't know. She didn't understand that Gene Keys is drawing from the same well as human design, that it came out of human design. Yes, it's different and I respect Richard Rudd. And I, I actually love Gene Keys. I had a reading that I loved. I love the poetics of it. But to say that it's like, oh, human design is nothing but your strategy and authority mechanics, it's like a lot of the people who are arguing for gene keys, I feel like they don't understand human design well enough to make that statement because they just literally don't know what they're talking about. The human design has so many layers. So a lot of the people who are saying, I really resonate with my sidereal chart, they may not know about their transits in the traditional human design. They may not know about their brain type. They may not know about all these other things under the hood that are in their chart. If they don't know their chart in depth, they're just not informed enough to make that. Now, oh, yeah. Well, I don't mean to cut you off because before I forget, yeah, it was this guy that was talking about the sidereal human design, and he was saying he was a three. Five, he was a, he he was saying that he was a three five. Now he's a six two or something like that, and he was saying no he's a now he's a five two two five or something like that okay. yeah this is i know you're you're talking about the youtube video of yeah. cosmic human design he's the one that's like shaking things up about but okay. i was watching that as well and so so, so, yeah. so let me tell you let me tell you yeah he 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 said he was a three five right um that was his original chart and then the sidereal is this other thing and he was saying how he feels more like a hermit and so that's why he was saying, yeah, I, I totally line up to my sidereal because I, I don't feel like a three five. He said, that's the that's the one I don't really want to be. And that was the first flag for me. Most of the time when we figure out what we are, we don't want to be it. We always want to be something else. So I always wanted curly hair. It's People always with curly like that. hair. want my straight hair. That's it, how we are. <laughs> it's always like that. So I was like, oh, that's the first flag. So I know that I'm, I'm like, yeah, he he probably, I don't know how long he's been studying this, but he might not be studying this for too long because the dude sounded like a three, five messenger. Like the whole entire video was, was a video a being a heretic, <laughs> a, her, a, a, a her, heretical, heretical messenger, expressional messenger. messenger. He just, he just didn't, he just doesn't understand the nature of the unconscious five. The nature of the unconscious five isn't a five that's always talking in people's faces all the time. Mm -hmm. But he was thinking that the three five is somebody that's like the, you know, like, we can be the life of the party and things like that. But we still, some three fives have very reserved natures. Like if, he can have if, a two moon yeah, your moons or are two, two brain yeah. or a bunch of two energy in his chart. Or his nodes are two second lines. So he basically gave the video in the format of a three five messenger mm -hmm. the whole video because he's bringing something new something that's heretical something that's experimentative the three is the scientist the three is experimental mm -hmm. so he was giving a message about a new experiment mm -hmm. which is what three fives do you try something new but he just have he just has to be ready to be wrong <laughs> because the three can be wrong mm -hmm. and and so can the five and so can the five so a true, a real three, five messenger who accepts the fact that they're the three, five messenger will know this and they'll, and they'll go into this new experiment as an experiment and would be like, you know what? Oh, I just found that the sidereal thing is different. Mm -hmm. Let me see, plug this in and see if it changes something, but let me even, let me do even more research to see why Ra even chose to do it this way in the first place. That's the thing. I feel like it's just. It wasn't, and it wasn't People, because he was confused. Yeah, or... Ra, like, <laughs> if you have you ever skipped one or two nights of sleep? Do you know what that felt like? So my mother's from Australia, so I've been back and forth between the United States and Australia several times, several times, maybe a dozen times. Just that jet lag will have you so disoriented so that you can barely function, right? It takes you several days to get over the jet lag from that trip. This dude went eight days eight days no sleep can are you matching that so these no people food. who coming up want to override what he's saying it's like okay but like who are you show me better he died show me better he literally <laughs> died early yeah because, because he, he was he totally has... dedicated himself to this thing for our benefit so it's like 
I just don't, there's some weird, like little funny entity that's driving that I feel like, because it's, it's, it's freshmen who just got the word, but now they want to be like PhDs. On the other hand, I have seven third lines in my chart. If you want to experiment, do it. I totally incur. I think it's fascinating. I love like, if, if you've worked with me as a client, I never tell anybody not to work with somebody else. I never tell you don't work with that shaman, don't work with this. I'm just very clear. This is my version of shamanism. This is how I work. This is how I roll. I tend to work with people where I'm teaching them how to heal themselves. I'm not the shaman that comes in and just does it for you because that's my contract in this lifetime. So I actually encourage people to work with other forms and I help them integrate those perspectives with the perspective that I bring because we're only going to benefit. So I think I actually encourage people check out your sidereal, do the experiment. At the end of the day, all these mental egos, well, my mental authority knows best. Oh yeah, well, my mental authority really knows best. Oh yeah, well, your mental authority is stupid. Oh yeah, yeah. that's what it looks like to me. Do the experiment, show me the results. Just do the experiment. It's like people are fighting against something, like nobody really cares. Nobody cares if you do the sidereal or not do the sidereal. I don't care if you do human design at all because I've learned the hard way. It's not my business to worry about people who don't care about the medicine I bring. It's not my business. Yes. yes. I would I would resent it if somebody was doing that to me and telling me you shouldn't study human design. You shouldn't use IFS. I would resent that because it's my right to follow this path. So if people want to do it, you should do it. It's it's exciting, it's fascinating. But if you don't understand what you're comparing it to, if you don't understand the original human design form and why it's structured the way that it's structured and that this dude got a download from a dying supernova to give us this information and he sacrificed eight days, almost losing his sanity, then you know I'm gonna kind of put you to the side a little bit. Now go do the experiment with Sidereal for seven years and show me the data. I will be fascinated. I would love to hear about it. I love all of this stuff. I'm on the left angle cross of healing, so I wanna learn all of it. And in fact, one of the reasons I was so attracted to human design is that I wanted to learn the I Ching. I wanted to learn the Kabbalah. I wanted to learn all these separate forms, the numerology, the astrology, but I'm not a mental being. I'm a manifesting generator. I'm here to be doing stuff in the body, in the physical world. I'm not a projector nerd who's going to sit for 10 hours a day reading and studying. So I actually felt genuinely sad, like, oh my God, I'm never going to master all these systems. I'm missing out. These spiritual nerds, they know all this stuff. I could not, I was trying so hard to learn the I Ching. Then Kayvon appeared in my life. <laughs> like, oh. Spiritual nerd, spiritual nerd extraordinaire. <laughs> Tech support. <laughs> and he gave me this cheat code download that allowed me to get all the information, knowing that I could access it if I needed to, but also there was this cheat code shortcut. Slow down get two green lights before you sign a contract. This is my design. Listen to your gut. That's not very mental. That was very freeing for me because I nearly killed myself because I had been pressured to be on a mental path because my family of origin was immigrants and that was the way to go. And that was the good thing for me to do. Finally, this was like unlocking all of that instead of the pressure of having to mentally learn everything, which was making me want to die. This was the gift. Just listen to your gut and don't sign a contract until you get your feet wet twice and it's a yes two times. Oh my God, thank you. This is how I felt. So if people want to study sidereal, I actually think they should. The more data, the better. But just don't do it in this way where you have to disrespect human design, the original human design. Same with Gene Keys. I love Gene Keys. It's beautiful. I love what the Gene Keys community is doing, all these amazing apps they're developing. This is going to enlighten humans. It's going to help humans heal. That's great. But you don't need to disrespect human design to follow the Gene Keys. That's all I'm saying. And that wasn't directed at you, Raven, by the way. I'm speaking to the general collective you. Use, use guys in the general collective. Use. <laughs> yes. Yes, y'all, y'all activated the the political Gaza. Yeah, I'm on that <laughs> duality. What is it? Not cross. Yeah, duality cross. Yeah, is it called a cross? So quarter. Uh, yeah, I'm on the duality quarter in human design, and my last name is Gaza. 
I mean, good grief. It's the most contested <laughs> slice of land on the planet. It's very challenging for me to not get pulled into the world of duality. But I feel like the way that I can do it in the most graceful way is to bring myself leadership there mm -hmm. and to bring the medicine of transcending the duality. So I'm going to have to jump in and get dirty sometimes, but it's not about taking sides. And I really want to be so clear about that. I support seekers going everywhere. This is why I recommend you check out Seekers Library because Raven has done a great job interviewing all types of people with beautiful information. So I encourage all of that. Um, but we don't have to, it doesn't have to become a war. Yes, yes. Yeah. So um, we can wrap, we can pretty much wrap it up right there because I don't, unless anybody else have any questions. Cheryl said a true healer will help you heal yourself. Yes, that's, that's our goal. Activation Total. coaching, we we want to help you become independent of us as soon as humanly possible, while also providing enough of that support in the beginning to help you learn to ride the bike, right? So it's okay to have training wheels for a little while, but then after a while, this is why we have a graduation ceremony, right? At the end, the 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 journey is done, and now we switch roles and we're just friends being friends. And if you want a session, you can buy a session, but it's not a cult where we're going to be following you around your whole life, trying to tell you how to live your life. We no. found these awesome tools. We feel it's our job to share the tools with you and help you implement them. And then after that, you, whatever, yeah. whatever happens, happens, whatever yeah. you want to do, whatever, you know, however you it's need freedom. to expand, you expand. And if you decide you want to be a sidereal human design coach after working with us, then that's great. We'll probably learn from you. No, but 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 she already but like Raven was saying, you know, she did the research and she, you know, came back full circle because once you really do the research and you look into it, you realize like, wait a minute, like certain things just don't add up. Like as far as just just even with raw, I mean, it's just for me, I know how it is like to go through something like you know, to go through a real life spiritual experience and to gain real life knowledge and to have somebody come up talking about it like that hasn't even went through a piece of <laughs> what you went through. You know, like when people talk about having their third eyes open and stuff. And, you know, I've actually had my third eye open to the point where it opened, like seriously. And you can see an eye, but most people talk about it and mm. They're not really talking about having an open third eye, but they may read something and they may, you know, do a little breathing or something like that. And then boom, they may, it's just wild. Like how much we think we, we are already there mm -hmm. when, whenever we learn something new, that's what I learned. It's like the freshness of learning something new always makes you feel as if you're at the top of the mountain of it. Yeah, because that expansive experience is so real. Mm -hmm. But it's so much more to go after that first initial, just, you know, revelation. Yeah, and that's why, yeah, and I'm just using the sidereal as an example, and we don't even have to, I, I would say anything, like, you know, from the shamanic healing perspective, maybe you want to do EMDR, maybe you want to do tapping, know. maybe you want to do other forms of trauma, you know, there's really great work being done now for the nervous system, which is not my specialty. So yeah, we, our job is to teach you about these tools to the best of our ability. And it's a wide, wide world. And you're going to have your own individual path to go down. And we're, it's like, I feel like <laughs> what, you know how they do those airdrops in the hunger games with like special gifts and stuff. I kind of feel like that's what we're doing. Cause that's how I feel about these tools. It was like, somehow my spirit guides are higher self airdropped ifs and human design in my life and lucid dreaming skills and suddenly it was like a totally new game for me mm -hmm. um but yeah we 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 really we are super open-minded we support experimentation we also support respecting people who sacrificed you know to to share things with us that are really helpful. I mean, I would feel the same way if, if somebody was talking about Richard Schwartz and, and IFS, he created this IFS system. Um, and if people want to, you know, sort of disrespect that tradition, and they don't even understand the system, I would feel the same way. So experiment and critique everything. Um, 
that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like we can end it right here. If uh, anybody else got any questions, we pretty the, the, it's just down to the last couple of students. Oh. I just sent the goodbye to Diana to Roxanne. So Diana, I'll tell you later. Thanks for being here. Oh, you sent it to Roxanne by mistake. Yeah. Oh. Any other questions? Last minute? Anything else? No, no, no. Well, okay. Yeah. If yeah. anybody's on the fence, you can always um, make an appointment, a uh, free consultation, um, or you can sign up directly on the website, um, or you can email us if you have questions, activationcoaching at gmail.com. Yeah. So yeah. see you guys later with much love and much light. Once again, I love you. I forgive you. I accept you. I allow you and I honor you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for just listening to us and just rolling with us for these two hours. Yeah, I can't believe. We, I thought this would be 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Thank you, Roxanne. Thanks, everybody, for being here live. Yama Led and Raven and Lori and Cheryl and everybody else who I know dropped off already. And for everybody else who. Yeah, watching the recording. Watch this later on. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.